Hello guys. So in this video we're gonna talk about the dolly zoom effect. It's a very efficient way to make a particular scene feel more immersive. Besides uh, the demo that you saw at the beginning, here are a few examples of how this effect looks in movies. Using this picture, I'm going to explain how dolly zoom works. We have an object that should remain the same size during the whole camera shot. So this value, our width, is unchanged. The camera, while it moves forward or backwards, to maintain the same size of an object inside the shot, uh, should change only one attribute, the focal length. So, from my previous tutorial on the tilt shift effect, you may know that while we change the focal length of camera, it leads to the change of the field of view, this angle. So, if we combine this knowledge, uh, we can actually recreate the dolly zoom. We need to change the field of view of camera uh, simultaneously with the change of the distance. Uh, dolly zoom area blueprint. As you can see, I have the trigger box with the specific collision setup. So basically, I have query only and I ignore everything except the pawn. Here on the left, you may see uh, my variables and two of them, animation time and the dolly zoom field of view, are said to be editable through the outliner. So here and here. So how my implementation works. If I launch the game and I uh, push my character towards to the box, on its overlap, my character loses control. Uh, dolly zoom happens, and once it's rolled back, I can move my character again. And as you may see, uh, the idea is to lurp between uh, the initial character uh, spring arm components and uh, camera components, lens and field of view with the one that I have uh, in this dolly zoom uh, box. So the whole effect happens with the help of simple uh, timeline. It has values between uh, 0 and 1. Next I store it as the variable and use as an alpha between uh, initial uh, character attributes and the one that I have here. On the begin play I have kind of tricky logic to extend the actual uh, length of my animation. So set play rate with this logic, 1 divided by animation time. This leads to the following, that for instance if we have 2 seconds here, it means 2 seconds for the animation uh, play forward and 2 seconds for animation play backward. So the whole uh, time is 4 seconds. On the begin play, on the uh, component begin overlap, I check whether uh, other actor is my default pawn. And if it's so, I simply extract two components. So I assume that you uh, use the same pipeline and your character has its own uh, spring arm and the camera. Each time I overlap with uh, this volume, I need to set default uh, value for the uh, boolean type variable. That will help me to uh, roll back my animation and restore uh, input. And here is the disable input for my uh, default pawn. Next we play our timeline, lerp between uh, values, so our initial fourth, dualism fourth that we define uh, in the t uh, here in the uh, outliner. And now comes the implementation of the dolly zoom distance. So default formula found uh, on the Wikipedia says that distance for our dolly zoom effect is calculated by dividing widths on uh, two time tangent multiplied by the half of fourth, which in our case width is the initial spring arm length 
and fourth is the delta fourth that we have. You may see that uh, by default I has different formula, and there is a reason for this one. So, if we take a look at how uh, it is proposed to calculate, here I have the prints for the target arm lens because we are calculating dolly zoom distance. Simple lerp will always return the correct value when the effect is gone, but uh, calculations with the uh, degrees, radians, uh, sinus, cosinus, whatsoever, they, uh, they are kind of messy. So, by default, my target arm lens on the Cherokta is 200 units. If I use the uh, proposed approach, you may see some artifacts. First is the following. This pop-up of the camera distance and, uh, as you can see, return value is 100 units, but we expect 200. If we use my formula, you may see that we have smooth transition, character remains the same size, and when the effect's gone, we have our proper 200 units value. So guys, if you use my approach with this formula and the fixed 90 degree uh, field of view angle, you can actually manipulate with the offsets on your sprint arm component with the rotation and location. You can also use the uh, camera uh, boom lag and uh, dolly zoom effect will work perfectly fine whether you uh, have the tele or the white lens set up. And let me demonstrate it to you. So next part is so-called custom dolly zoom. If for any reason you have chosen not to use default field of view uh, angle, uh, as I showed you, this simple approach simply won't work. There comes this formula and uh, it's slightly different also from the one you saw at the beginning, because uh, uh, after a few experiments, I found that using aspect ratio as the multiplier over this uh, approach leads to better results. We also need to have lerp as we have for our fourth here. So uh, this will always have some error tolerance. That's why we need to lerp between our initial sprint arm lens using animation alpha. Uh, for the example, we have our character default field of view set to 60 degrees. And uh, I've changed the dolly zoom fourth of the first encounter of the first box to 10 degrees. Now let's see what happens. When we approach the box, we see the dolly zoom happens with a little bit shift of the distance uh, towards our model. But it returns the proper value and simply works fine. Uh, in case you like this uh, kind of effect, where you not only have the uh, dolly zoom, but also the uh, zoom in or zoom out of your model, you can play with this. But in case you want to uh, like the use default approach where the uh, model stays the same uh, and the whole scene changes, I highly recommend you not to play around with the default uh, field of view values too much. So simply stay uh, at 90 and if you want to have the telescope like the very short range shot, simply adjust the target arm lens uh, distance and use the uh, simplified approach this one. And the last part of the tutorial is finishing up the whole blueprint. So let's delete unnecessary stuff. Unfinished we have the branch where we check if the rollback of animation was done, then go and restore the input, it's the custom event. And if it's not, also uh, roll back the effect. So simply set the boolean type to be true 
and reverse the animation. Then when the animation uh, plays for the second time, uh, this value will be true and we have this uh, event called. So something like this. Um, I hope you like this tutorial and in case you want to support me, I do have the Patreon page. Link is on the main page and uh, under the description to this video. So as always, subscribe to my channel, press like button, play, uh, press the bell. See you soon guys.